Hello again. This is Gail Cameron from My Pocket Coach for our Leadership Lesson Series. And with us today, we have a woman leader of substance, poise, elegance, and integrity. And I'm not just saying that because I've known Cindy for more than 20 years when she first came on a coaching program at the I Group. Cindy is the founder, Cindy Mabasa Koyana, for those of you who don't know her, is the founder of the African Women Chartered Accountants. She later led the formation of the commercial arm, AWCA Investment Holdings, which she currently chairs. She is the principal of AIH Capital, the private equity firm, which is a proud member of SAFCA. She has served on a number of large and listed companies where she has chaired the audit and risk committees, social and ethics committees and remuneration committees. Her current boards include MTN, Bidvest, Sun International Limited and the Sugar Association of South Africa. She is a fellow of the, the Aspen Global Leadership Network and a member of the International Women's Forum. Cindy, a very warm welcome. It is so wonderful to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gail. It's lovely to connect again. Uh, it's been a while, uh, but I'm so happy that we can do something on the leadership space again. So as a woman leader, in your industry, uh, share with us a valuable lesson that you have learned. Okay, yes, I've got a number of lessons that I have learned. I think the one I can mention in particular is the importance of being competent and drilling yourself and creating depth and knowing your stuff and being very clear what you need to be known for in your profession. But alongside that, I've learned that qualifications are really, really important. That's what took me out of my own upbringing, very difficult upbringing. However, in addition to those doors being opened by qualifications, it's character, that it's your values that will keep you there, but not even keep you there, but will make you thrive and be noticed. It's important to know that beyond the title, when people call your name, what comes to their mind? What do people know you for and know you to stand for? Beautiful, thank you. And I know it hasn't always been easy for you. You faced many challenges throughout your career, haven't you? I have indeed. <laughs> So how have you built confidence, you know, and or resilience over the course of your career? Yeah, I think indeed those mistakes are the ones that have built the confidence because through them, it's being able to walk a journey with people who mentor, guide you. Gail, you've been a coach for a greater part of my career. And I'm very blessed that very early in my career, in the late 90s, I saw the importance of investing in myself, investing in my career. Because when those knocks came, I was able to unpack, to say after each one of them, I really needed to take the lessons. And I'm so grateful because indeed, I was never the same after each one of them. I indeed humbly say, it took me to the next level of my greatness. And it was a humbling experience for me too, Cindy, to witness your growth and your transition as you overcame so many really difficult challenges and rose above them. So no, certainly, Gail, and I mean, like in that building of confidence, when you know you've been through this, you can speak better about it, mm. you know, than talking theory. So that is, so those continuous experiences, um, even when things went well, but most importantly, when you know 
this is not the right way because I know what it did when it was done in this particular way. And that has built a lot of confidence in me. And I know you're also a mentor because you've got so much to give back. And, you know, it's like when somebody said to me, uh, what makes a good coach? I said, the best coaches have the deepest scars because how else can you possibly begin to understand unless you've been there? And when you put yourself in that space of being a coach and mentor, it's amazing how the lessons come thick and fast. And when you learn them, you can, you know, offer them on and pass them on to, to your mentees and coaches. So we've all been faced with challenges, you know, in our personal and professional life during the last two years, especially in COVID. How do you stay motivated? And I must say, I'm so sorry to learn of the tragedy in your family of somebody passing away from COVID, Cindy. And, you know, our hearts go with you at this difficult time. How, how do you deal with this? Thanks, Gail. I appreciate that. It's interesting because throughout that journey and, and the, um, you know, the one part that indeed has kept us afloat, um, not just now, but throughout this time since um, COVID started, I focused on my spiritual grounding. You know, uh, especially at the beginning, we all remember that this thing caught us off guard all of a sudden we found ourselves with ourselves, without the noise, without the people, without the things, you know, that maybe have always, you know, uh, 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 driven us, so to speak. And that for me, you know, gave me the realization that, you know, tomorrow will not, or is not guaranteed, but not only is it not guaranteed, it cannot be guaranteed in the manner that I wanted because I had plans. We had plans last year. Some of the friends were having milestone birthdays. We had all these glorious plans. My, my family as well. There were so many things that we were saying next month we're doing this. We couldn't. So what that said to me, it reminded me of knowing to focus on things that matter. Focus on things that matter, but also what it, all, it, it, it reminded me is that what is on that list of the things that matter? Do I know them or we just say them? And indeed it was family. Indeed it was health and wellness. And, and Gail, I must say that I am again very blessed and, 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 and thankful that this journey of spiritual grounding started very early in my life. I'm grateful to my mom who grounded it or who, who introduced it in me with the values she built, but also as you met me at the prime of my career life, already at the time, I was very aware that Cindy, what is going to build you is not just becoming a CA, but it is the human being you need to become. You know, it is the character and you know that at that early stage in the late 90s, beginning 2000, I didn't even need for a corporate to pay for my coaching. I didn't need to be part of a career development plan. Gail, I sought you, I found you as an individual looking for personal development looking for professional development. So those are the things that really got even deeper during COVID when I needed to spend time on my own. I think the last point, Gail, was also the realization that, oh, wow, I'm locked down with the people I love. I was locked down with my family. I had a home to be locked down in. There were people who didn't have that. I was able to go and rush and buy the food in the bulk buying that people were doing. Some people didn't have that opportunity. So that for me, Gail has taught me to focus on the positive things in life and, and, and realize the privilege I have because to have been able to wake up and have this interview with you here today, Gail, I'm thankful. So it has forced me to be in the space of gratitude for the small things and even the big things. 
That's so beautiful, Cindy. And it's, you know, gratitude changes everything. And I love the way you've said that. Well done. So what changes do you think we need to be mindful of in a post-COVID world, both personal and professional? Right. And, and Gail, I, I, I've said, I've touched on this, is, is the importance of living purposefully. Uh, that is what for me personally is, has become very clear. And that's, you know what, we chase so many things as human beings. Um, for me, one of the key things is that new, you know, health is our new wealth, mm. you know, uh, these days. So personally, that is the one thing that I've realized, you know, is, is again, finding meaning in everything I give time to, you know, in, in me right now, trying to catch up, Gail, I've lost so much time with the bereavements and I've been very picky on what I give time to. And Gail, you know, I love the space of leadership. And when you ask for me to give time, I thought, I love doing this. I love sharing, you know, the stories of leadership. What's going to build me? What's going to build others? So those are the things that have become very important. But also professionally, it has become very clear that we are not going to see the professional and corporate environment that we are used to. You know, how do we build corporate culture when we are not sitting together and being able to walk and build teams? How are we going to build teams? How are we going to lead, you know, teams when we're used to leading, when we seeing people here with us? It means I need to find ways of leading unconventionally, you know, and leading even when people are not with me physically and being able to read when I'm leading a team on the on teams, you know, that so-and-so hasn't said much today. So-and-so, you know, isn't looking fine. So-and-so has not put on their video at all, you know, today. What does it mean? You know, so those are the things that I've realized that professionally building networks using different means. It means, you know, you will need to continuously now build relationships doing the right things. You know, professionally, um, it has also taught me that, um, I, I mean, I realized a young CA who started at one of the audit firms last year in January, that person has had very few opportunities of being in a team setup as a, as a, as a, as a, as a trainee accountant. So, you know, that person has not even been able to be in the offices of the client they are auditing. You know, so, um, so those are the things that mean as we move forward, things are not going to be the same, but instead of looking at it as negative, what are the opportunities? The digitization of audit, for example, Gail, has made it easier because now we can tap into clients' work without necessarily going to client, it's become efficient. That means now the ticking we used to do as auditors is being done by a robot. So what it means, so what is my value? So it has forced me to ask myself, so what is my value? What is the value I then bring, you know, in being a finance executive? So that for me has then said, in that I need to bring meaning to numbers. So it's not just about auditing what has been, but what's the value I bring to a client. It means engaging in, in the future of their business. How do we unlock value in an audit client than only focusing in the history? How do we build winning businesses by being an audit partner? Obviously, whilst managing independence, there's a big issue around independence as well these days. Well, we, must, we, we are being told, build relationships, but at the same time, be independent. <laughs> so there are some of those things that we need to find a balance in how we do them. So there's lots of learnings. We just need to open ourselves to them and being critical in our thinking. And thank you for sharing that because, you know, I think the audit profession, my heart goes out to them because, I mean, you've also been in the audit profession for a very long time. And yes, how do you inculcate culture when you're in the, operating in the digital world? 
and you know I love your empathic leadership style and the fact that you've mentioned how important that is Cindy because mm -hmm. we are living in the era of the ascendancy of women leaders and it is imperative you know that women get accelerated into positions of power and it's for these very reasons if I think of somebody like a Shirley Machaba for example and the empathy that she has brought to mm -hmm. that leadership you know so it's exactly what you said you can't see the person so it's showing that you care that's the most important thing too when you're selling ideas is to show clients that you care about them before they can care about what you know so you know we really need to put people at the front center of everything that we do so thank you for, for bringing that up and highlighting it so how do you measure success Yeah, uh, Gail, for me, I measure success, I'll say periodically, um, you know, for, at each milestone, um, you know, when something that I had put a goal for and I managed to meet it. Um, so I use a number of elements which are high in my values. You know, for example, family is high on my values. So success for me, as I say, I'm so grateful that I do have a family, you know, I have children. So at every point when we, we had the first child, had the second child, that was success. You know, it's a healthy child. Um, I love Gail because uh, I think you were also one of the people who used to be so surprised when I was pregnant and I waited till the end and I didn't want to find out, you know, what gender the child is. And, you know, you'd say, Cindy, you always want to be in control of everything in your life. I'm, I'm in awe, you know, are you sure you're going to sustain this till the end? And indeed I did. And even with Wesisa, my, my daughter, my second child, and, you know, you laughed. I said, I'm sure the second one, you're not going to be able to see this through. And Gail, for me, that was a success that I was able to say, it doesn't matter what gender it is. I am grateful that I've got, uh, I've been blessed with, with a life to look after. You know, family is high. Traveling is high on my values. Gail, very early in my life when I was an executive, a young CFO at Transnet, I got to travel the world. You know, being a young girl from Umlazi, having to see the many countries we had to go to raising funds for either the aeroplanes at SAA, which were part of Transnet, or insurance for the, the, the locomotives, having to travel the world, so many countries in my early 30s, that was success. You know, um, it, it is, it, 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 that is how I measure it, uh, you know, Gail. These days, it is not the end. Success is not having rich, I mustn't put this big goal for myself. It's the little bits and pieces. I've seen the week. And when I look at my list for the week, wow, I've done four out of five. This is success. So that is how I measure, you know, success, um, uh, you know, gain from my side. That's beautiful. And I love the fact that you talked about how you didn't want to know the gender, because that is another strength of women, by the way, in terms of leadership is tolerating uncertainty. We are much better at that than our male partners. So tolerating ambiguity, <laughs> not oh, wanting to know and control. That's a beautiful thing. And that's a <laughs> lovely the way you illustrate that. <laughs> sure. So what advice would you give to our next generation of leaders and trailblazers? Yeah, you know, and you use the word, our next generation of leaders, is that everybody wants to be a leader. Start by leading yourself. That is the most important thing. We all want to know, know we are managers, we lead, we lead other people. For me, the importance has been, I, I realized, I woke up and realized I was leading others and leading other things because I started leading myself in knowing who I was, understanding my strengths, building on them and managing my weaknesses. That is very, very important. 
it is also important for our younger generation to know what they stand for. It is, it, it, it is, it, it, it's focusing on, you know, values-based leadership, you know, stand for something, know what is high in your values and, 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 and agitate for that and be known for that. If you are a stickler for diversity, if you are a stickler for unfairness where you call it out, let people know that is what you stand for. And, 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 and key to that is also knowing that life is not just about yourself. You know, it is realizing the importance of that because I see the younger generation is very focused on what is in it for them. You know, oh no, this doesn't drive me anymore. Oh, I want to go to the next thing. I'm not motivated anymore. Um, and 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 sometimes miss the bigger picture to say it can't just be about myself. You know, look at the bigger picture it, because it must be beyond you. You know, significance must be something that it mustn't just be my success. And we've just spoken about when do I think I'm successful? So all of these things were just about me. Okay, Cindy, you've set goals. But significance is when it doesn't just touch me. It doesn't just, that just touch my family. It must go beyond that, even to the communities and even to the nations. Nations must know when they call Gail Cameron's name, when they call Cindy's name, you know, that is the importance is because it has moved beyond just you. And that is what I like to see, you know, the next uh, generation of leaders, you know, focusing on respecting life. I do get a sense that also, you know, we take things too easy. Uh, we need to respect life and take it as a gift. Life is a gift that we must respect and, you know, and, 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 and treasure. Um, so yes, Gail, I think to end on that point, it is important that our young leaders realize that hard work is important, but they must work smarter and also keep their attitude in check because attitude will determine their altitude. Oh, I love that. Beautiful. And, you know, isn't it, uh, wasn't it Eleanor Roosevelt who said that you know, the present moment is a gift, you know, that's why we call it the present. So the present. I, I absolutely love that. And um, mm -hmm. I, I'm also so glad that you mentioned the fact that, you know, women need to speak out. So, you know, assertiveness is a skill that one learns and it's, you know, especially it's, it's difficult when you're in a passive mode, but you, you can learn to say no with great love. So, you know, that's also an important um, um, lesson for these youngsters to learn. So um, before we end, I would love to read you this poem by Max Boyce, uh, which he wrote about, you know, in this time about COVID. And I have uh, changed it, you know, to sort of suit South African conditions and, and Joburg in particular. And I'm going to take a few minutes and I'm going to read this. Okay. Uh, his poem is called uh, When the Tide Came Out. And especially when we are grieving or dealing with loss, sometimes it's difficult to put things into words. And that is a time when poetry is a good way to express ourselves. So last night as I lay sleeping, when dreams came fast to me, I dreamt I saw Jerusalem beside a calming sea. And one dream I'll remember as the stars began to fall was the face of a homeless man bent, haggard and withdrawn. A little girl approached him and handed him some food. No greater light has ever shone from a face so forlorn. And dreams like that sustain me till these darkest times have passed and chase away the shadows no caring night should cast. But times like this can shine a light as hardship often can to see the best in people and the good there is in man. And I remember Joburg with nobody about 
when everything was closed like Sunday night and just the moon came out. And I recall the highways with never a peep, the busy intersections, ghostly and asleep. It seemed everyone was sleeping now and just the moon came out. And when these days are over and memories remain, when children painted rainbows and the sun shone through the rain and the thought of everyone who carried all the pain, I hope the nurses never see a time like this again. And though the sun is shining now, I have no immediate plans. So I write a book on staying in and how to wash your hands. We've had enough days of lockdown and times of staying in and I'm running out of vodka. So I think I'll try the gin. And my neighbors are complaining and I've heard them scream and shout and the sound the bins are making when I take the empties out. When all this is over, and our fragile world survives. I hope that God is caring now for the ones who gave their lives. And I'll pray we find an answer for many there is doubt, but God will draw back the heavens and the stars will come out. And I'll remember the mornings with nobody about when the shops were closed like Sunday night and just the moon came out. Wow. I just wow. to read that to you because I send this with great love and support at this difficult time. Thank you, Gail. Thank you very much. You know, we still see the stars come out, the moon come out. And that's what we must hang on to. We're still able to see that amidst the challenges so thank you it's my pleasure it's been wonderful having you and god bless you thank you god bless you too gail thanks for the opportunity and hope everything goes well with you as well and love to the team thank you cindy take care thank you gail god bless you bye